Well, here I am like a little kid looking out the window. Third Saturday in a row since I got my new sawmill. And it is pouring down rain. I cut four boards on it with Mike three weeks ago. Haven't had a chance to use it since. <sighs> so today, I'm down here in the basement down here in the basement everybody makes fun of my pittsburgh accent uh we used to have a big console tv sitting here on this stand that i built years and years ago actually i thought i did a pretty good job of top rotates if you wanted to change the direction of the tv uh but we since mounted this up on the wall and I'm going to make a new stand. We're done with all this surround sound system. We don't need it blasting at it. Nobody ever used it, actually. It's probably been turned on one time. If you're interested in it, I'll make you a great deal on the speakers and the acoustic mass. <clears throat> Everything works. We just never use it. Um, so what I envisioned here... I'm. I'm down here making a sketch right now, and then I'll head up to the shop. Let me show you what I did in the bathroom. Okay, so this is our this is our basement bathroom. Powder, well, full bath, I guess, shower. I made these, I made this concrete sink. This is one of the first countertop sinks I did. And I made it with rebar legs. This is one inch rebar with half inch rebar. Try and get a little bit further away so you can see it. It's just kind of rustic looking, but a neat look. I really like it and I get a lot of comments on it that, you know, friends and so forth like it. So with that being said, walking over here, I remembered uh, Emily needed a t kitchen table for in college. Where's another light at? There we go. So we made this, uh, same idea. Uh, this is like inch and a quarter rebar. Came up with a little pattern, crisscross pattern with half inch rebar. And this was rough cut oak. You can see how it dried. We just put it together real quick. Nothing was dried, so really dried. And I just never fixed it. Now I can easily separate this, cut that, pull that in. We just never did it. Actually, took advantage of it hanging decorations. So, uh, with that being said, this is the same look I'm going with over there. These are concrete too, by the way. How about that? So, I want to do a stand. Oh, about this high, you know, maybe 36 inches high. And I think we'll do the rough cut lumber on top, set some knickknacks on it under the TV. And then we'll do the shelving underneath it. Same idea, inch and a quarter rebar half inch rebar that could be a pretty neat look so i'm going to put a drawing together did it quit raining or i'm going to go cut some lumber still raining okay so i'll get something drawn keep you posted okay so finney came down to help me make this drawing okay here is our tv and it's 45 inches so 14 inches down will be the top of my wood top shelf. My rebar will be 39 inches tall. Second shelf, I was thinking keeping this a little bit bigger in here, keeping this down about a, a lower third. Uh, this is rebar for support in the back. And th these could change. I was thinking two diagonals here. And again, so these would be at the back wall with open shelving, um, shelf and shelf. Um, so let's head up to the shop, see if we can't replace this with this. 
Coming to help? Yeah? Let's go. Yeah, I finally made it up to the garage. Here is the stand. Uh, so I'm cutting my uprights 39 inches. So this is what I'm using for my legs. I have these left over from a job we did, inch and a quarter rebar. I think it's gonna look really cool. I measured them all out at 39 inches. Get them cut. Okay, here we go, last one. It's a little bit dark, back in that corner. Slide it ahead to my mark. Let me bring you up here. See my marker right there. Drop the blade a little. This is a cylinder I can lower that blade and then let it down slowly when it's cutting. Okay, lock it in place. This saw is almost as old as I am. And it just keeps on cutting. Imagine doing that with a hacksaw or a sawzall. Nice clean cut. And this is the one I want. Okay, so those are my 39 inches. Now I need to make some 69 inches outside to outside. So I'm cutting these at 60 inches. One, two, three, going across to support these shelves. That'll give me a four and a half inch overhang on each side. I think that'll be nice. Yeah, this one right here. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Conquer with the Hosses. It is Steven and I today. The dream team. The dream team at it. Uh, so we cleaned out behind the seat. If anybody needs a jacket, I think we have an extra. Uh, it is a rainy, miserable day. Pumpers here, looks like they're all set up too. Well, halfway setting up some line you can pull up and go down the driveway if you want um, that'll save us some room on the street for the mixer so nice easy one for us uh, it's gonna be raining all day so besides that it's gonna be an easy one um, hey I was watching victory's video yesterday about his magnetic stamps uh, Ryan I'd like to see more about those um, really interested in how good they lock together and then any touch-ups but I did like you know hearing that click together uh, you didn't see that part I, I didn't see that it one. was it's pretty neat and when you're stamping the patterns move a little bit now you got to get in between them and roll them and touch up so if, if that's one way you could eliminate that that would really speed up the process so thanks for showing us that thanks for the shout out on the straight edge and uh, it's always good to hear your name on TV, right? <laughs> Even if you were just kidding around. So, let's get at it. Okay, so we got here a little bit late. No, we were on time, they were early. They had it all connected up to here. We got a little bit more hose out. And we are all connected up, ready to go. Uh, now, like I said, it's, it's been raining for a couple days. And these holes got some mud in them. So I'll go up here and show you what's going on. So I think we have 12 of these holes to do. Some of them have sauna tubes. And some of them are just dirt holes. And they uh, collapsed in a little bit. So we're just going to take a minute and clean some of this loose material out. So this here's the worst one. I already got some of this out. I'll get some more here. 
throw some rebar in there, we're ready to go. Okay. Pull that back. I don't want to just put it on the edge and have it fall right back in the hole. Okay. So, the dirt's so sticky it's not coming out of the post hole digger. I can feel solid now. Look at you in a hole. <laughs> I'm just glad they're not deeper. Oh, it did. Okay. Get some spoils out of there. That feels pretty good. Inside the toy box. That's a Be toy. careful with it. We don't want to break the the toy. <laughs> it's it's the right size for the job. Look at that. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get a good shot at it, but it's working good. All right, that's good. All right, Eddie, how you making out? A lot of water in that. In that. I swear. He's saying he could carry this all by himself, 30 footer. I just asked him, could we pick up the pace a little bit? That's all I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've known him forever. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use this to get to the end sauna tube. I'll just slide it right out and go right on top of the scaffolding. Take your time. No, no, I'm looking to make sure I'm still on my, on my, uh, everything is, you know? Beautiful. I got, I got OSHA approved right there. We'll get a tie down on it. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Mixer showed up. It started sprinkling a little bit. What do you think, Tom? Are we going to make it before the rain? I hope so. Yeah. If, by four o'clock this morning, I could hear it outside. I'm thinking, oh boy, this is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. so, okay, here, we'll get them mixed up. Let's go. So pumping the concrete through this much line, steel line not so much of a problem. The rubber line pulls the moisture out of the, pulls the cream off of the rock and it jams up. So we get a couple bags of Portland, mix it up to a slurry, dump it in the pipe. Sort of prime all this and get it coated with some, just some slurry. Get everything coated. And then that'll help it push through all that rubber hose. Mix it up to a six inch slump. We're going to dump this in the rubber. Okay. Get it all over your hands. That's fine. We make the hose for a reason.
So we're about halfway. Bucket of prime. Like I said, he's done mixing up another batch for up there. There we go. What's on the heater? Feeder. Feeder. Okay. I thought you said heater. I'm like, wow, that's a high tech. Peter, we got us with water. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can see it going down. Now the mixer driver has to keep this concrete full, so he's looking right at it. Okay, let's go to the end. Now you can see these moving. They're under a lot of pressure. Keep these knuckles free. If that rubs against something, it could pop loose. Could rupture a hose if it's rubbing on something sharp. And I think we are there. Okay, blew out the slurry on the hillside. Hey, you want these straight edge? Always. You want to go get me a straight edge? Okay, and there's a nail. Oh, clear up there. Okay, painted orange. I think we're gonna need more concrete. I got ten yards. Feel it? Uh, a little bit more. From another spot. All right. Okay. Let's see, get that off. Good. You want them sticking up or all the way in? All the way in. That's good. Ooh. I feel like I should be doing something. Long way down there. I don't feel anything moving. What if we ought to do half and come back to it? We're at ground level now. Going. It's going, it's going alright. It? Yeah, I'm I'm holding it. No, I'm good. I'm good. It like I said, it have to be the Good. Perfect. Uh, no. All right, this was the hard one. Okay. Just taking the two hoses off, dumping the concrete in the hole. And you'll just drag those to the truck and squirt them out. Where do you see what they do with the ones that are still connected? I'll get this cleaned up and caught up. Push those below the top. There we go. 
getting down to it. Two holes to go. Will we have enough concrete? <clears throat> He's putting it right in the center, forcing that water out. All right, we're just pumping the water out of this. There we go. And we're getting air out of it too, so the hopper's empty. I like the water coming out of there, nice. Thank you guys. Yep. Right up over our little barricade underneath the hose. Okay. All right, that'll slow it down before it runs into the creek. <laughs> and I don't think there's that much more in the line. Yeah, here it comes. Here comes the rain. Right, we knew that. Yep. It's good to be true. All right, let's get these brackets in. So they have these garbage bags on them. We're going to get these buttoned back up. It's going to rain all day. Oh, come on. find whatever we can drape over them got some plywood here Woo! <laughs> lines clean okay just double checking everything's picked up those couplings and uh, rubber grommets I uh, just always want to make sure those get picked up and back onto the truck. Everything's covered up, secure. I'll get his air compressor put away. And that is it. Now, it's a rainy, crummy day, but this is a good day for this project. That way we don't have to waste, excuse me, sorry, a nice sunny day uh, doing this when we could be pouring our driveway, stamp patio, swimming pool, so forth. This is an old friend of mine. Uh, he gets projects like this. So, so as you know, always we uh, answer the phone when he calls. Good guy to work for. Hey, I do have one other little issue with Ryan from Victory. Steven saw the video where you offered your guy double to come saw cut the next day. So he saw that. Now I'm going to hear about it. All right. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks, Ryan. See you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Conquer with the Hosses. See you uh, tomorrow. Hopefully, it's a sunnier day. Yes, again. Yeah. I don't know.